Aaron, what is our second main topic today? Our second main topic comes to us from Ankush. Hi, John. I love your shows. There are a lot of big movies which are going to be released this year. I just want to ask, which have the potential to be the biggest movie of 2022? I think it's going to be Avatar 2, but I want to hear your thoughts. All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, listen, we, we had a discussion yesterday about, you know, the Batman just became the only film in 2022 to open to $100 million, only the second film since 2019 to open with over $100 million. And so we started talking yesterday about what other films coming out this year have that potential to be $100 million films. And that spawned a couple of our viewers to write and say, like, okay, you're talking about the $100 million, but which ones are going to be the, which one is going to be the biggest film of the year? What's going to be the biggest film of the year? And when we get to the end of it and then all the box offices count up, what is going to be the one that more movie fans, more of us, get feel appealed to by that movie, get motivated to see it, get excited to see it, go out, buy our movie tickets, use our A-list, whatever, to go out to see those movies? Which one of these movies will we, the movie-going audience, make the biggest film of the year? That's a good question. I want to propose to you that there are a couple of possibilities, all right? A couple of possibilities. I'm going to name my top five, but first I'm going to give you some that I think are in, at least in the discussion about which ones it could be. So let's start with this. I think one of the, not in my top five, but an honorary mention, one of my honorary mentions is The Flash. Now, not a lot of DC movies I think only one DCEU movie has broken the billion dollar mark. And that was, of course, Aquaman. So. Well, jo Joker, too, but it's not part of the DCEU. Yeah, so DCEU, though. So Joker's not part of the DCEU. So I think only Aquaman has broken the billion dollar mark. But despite the fact there's been so many ridiculous delays, despite the fact that they have gone through four sets of writers and th at least three directors before landing on a very, very good one. The the possibility with Michael, um, I almost said Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas returning as Batman with Michael Keaton. <laughs> that would be awesome. That's a different movie altogether. <laughs> Michael Pena. That's a, Michael Pena. <laughs> Michael returning Pena as Batman. as Batman. I want that. Oh God! I'm now not I, even kidding. That would now be awesome. Now I can't see anything else in my head except that. I want that as well. Okay. So other than that, I mean, and of course, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> why am I Ezra Miller's? Uh, bye bye. <laughs> love of massaging women's necks. Um, besides all the drama and all that kind of stuff, I think there is a lot here that could make people excited about getting out to see it. And I don't, I'm not giving it a top five chance, but I think The Flash is one of the films that has the potential about maybe being that film. Another film I believe has the potential is Wakanda Forever. Now, I just talked yesterday about the fact that what's going to hurt this movie is two big things. Number one, the star is no longer there with Chadwick Boseman, obviously. But secondly, the main character is no longer there. So they're kind of rebooting and, and kind of in a, in a way, they're not actually rebooting in a way, but it's still Black Panther and it's Wakanda and it's an MCU film. So you got to acknowledge it at least has that potential. The last one I'm going to say is Lightyear. Um, again, not a top five chance of being the biggest film of the year, but Lightyear, again, it's a beloved character. You got the nostalgia factor. You're going to have parents who love Toy Story growing up now bringing their kids to watch more stuff of this. That and the trailer's delightful. The trailer's delightful. So, again, I don't think it's going to be any of those, but I do give them outside chances. So, okay, here are the five that I think have the biggest chances. The fifth best chance to me is Aquaman 2. Again, we just talked about it. Aquaman is the only movie in the DCU to make a billion dollars that the audience has rushed out for. I think the vast majority of the audiences who went to go see it really liked it. I think maybe some that didn't saw the Peacemaker finale and heard one of the greatest <laughs> lines in television history as Jason Momoa simply said, fuck you, Barry. That's one of the greatest <laughs> lines in television history. I think Aquaman does have a shot. I'm going to give it uh, the number five spot as to potential which one could be the biggest. Next up at number four for me is Jurassic World Dominion. Never underestimate a Jurassic World movie. People like going to see it. And the first trailer for this one was fabulous. The trailer for this movie was fantastic. Rob, you were in tears 
at certain scenes. I in teared that up. I, 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 you know what? I got all misty eyed and I couldn't help it. I had a single tear, like the old uh, 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 what Iron Eyes Cody commercials when he looks at the litter on the side of the yep. road. And, you know that was that, me. that was you. That was me. But it wasn't out of sadness. It was out of beauty. Yes, and joy. it was out of beauty and nostalgia and joy. And I, I literally, it was the realization of a childhood dream. Dudes on horseback riding with. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs as the sun is setting in the mon like Monument out, Valley. You called this is the Avengers of Jurassic Park movies. I yeah. called it the Spider-Man No Way Home. You're bringing the different generations. All the actors are there. So I think you got to seriously consider that it's got the chance to be that. So I'm giving it the number four chance. Number three, Thor Love and Thunder. I mean, first of all, it is an Avengers OG. People love Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Mm -hmm. Thor Ragnarok was a magnificent triumph. Everybody loved it. Taika Waititi's back. Everybody went bananas at Comic-Con when they brought out Jane again. So Natalie Portman came out, and Taika Waititi got down on one knee, held aloft Mjolnir as she took the hammer. I mean, so I think this thing's going to be a runaway box office smash. Will it be the biggest? I think it's got the number three chance. All right. My number two chance is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Mm. Coming off and parlaying off of the huge global all-time success of Spider-Man No Way Home, you have Patrick Stewart in the trailer coming also and spinning off the success of WandaVision. You got Wanda in there. It looks bonkers and great. The bonkersness might actually deter some people. Still, I think this is the second best shot. I think Doctor Strange and the Multiverse Madness is the second best shot at being the biggest movie of the year. I think the number one best shot, though, is Avatar 2. And I know I can already hear it. I know there are all these people because the, the circles they travel in, none of their friends are interested in Avatar 2. That's great. That's fine. When are you going to learn? When are we going to learn? Never bet against James Cameron. Mm. never ever bet against james cameron mm -mm. and how quickly we forget that avatar is the number one all-time box office film in history endgame took that title for a bit it took it back endgame will take it back again at some point but for now it is the biggest film in history and even people who right now kind of poo poo on the idea i'm telling you when they put out the first trailers for this James Cameron's going to blow our minds yeah, because that's what he does. And every time it seems like visual effects, technology, and movies can't go any further, James Cameron comes along and finds a way to push it forward even more. And that's why I think the number one chance of being the biggest movie of the year is Avatar. So just running it down again, I think the top five chances are Aquaman at number five, Jurassic World Dominion at number four, Thor Love and Thunder at number three, Doctor Strange 2 at number two, and Avatar 2 as my number one chance. What do you think, Ray? Can I ask you something? Yeah. What do you think the sleeper hit is going to be? The one that makes more than it should. I think it's going to be Nope. I don't know. Pe people aren't sleeping on uh, it. Are people not sleeping I on don't, it? I don't know if people are but, but you know what? It has the potential. If it's good. See, if it's if Nope is more get out and less us, mm. then it could be quite a significant hit. If I had to say there's a sleeper that I didn't put on this list at all, it's Top Gun. Top Gun to me is the sleeper. That that could be the one that surprises us because you know Aaron and I saw 13 minutes of this movie at CinemaCon and it blew our minds. Mm -hmm. We loved it, but there's that big question. This movie is 15 years too late. It's not three years too late. It's not five years too late. It's like 15. And years even too if late. it had come out 15 years ago, it would have been 20 years too late. And still. then it <laughs> would have been 20 years too late. So so. <laughs> so there's that. So I think the potential is there that we may end up being shocked at how many people want to rush out because this has that potential of a Mission Impossible. You know how big of a hit those end up being for Tom Cruise. So I'd say, I think the sleeper might be Top Gun. And there's also the nostalgia factor. You talk about that with Toy Story. There's also, you know, uh, the, uh, there's also the, the nostalgia factor of Top Gun. Hold a second. What are you trying to ask me? People are saying the Obi-Wan trailer just dropped. 
Oh, we'll take it. We'll we'll oh, go God. and take a look at that in a minute live. Okay. I, I thought it may because they put out the picture, so I thought it may. Anyway, let's stick on this for now. Um, I was like, should I keep talking? Is something happening? Um, you know, like the, we have the nostalgia factor for Lightyear. There's also the nostalgia factor for Top Gun. You know, people who grew up watching the original Top Gun are going to go back and want to be able to relive that, and then they're going to bring their kids who are going to enjoy a whole new generation of um, you know, of 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 sky athletes. So. What about the Batman though? Because I was actually—I mean—is that not being part of this? Is that not part of this conversation? That's what I was thinking too. But I mean, I was at the screening last week. We were talking, which is the reason why Joey Bishop is dressed as Wonder Woman because she's part of the DCEU, obviously, <laughs> um, in honor of us seeing the Batman for the first time. Um, I was talking to people that were at the screening who that was their third time seeing the movie and it wasn't even the weekend yet. It was Friday morning and they'd already seen the movie three times. Yeah, but it when you look at its opening weekend numbers, I don't think it has the chance yeah, of the reaching the. It's not going to have the legs and the chance to reach what I think a lot of these other ones are going to reach. Got it. So I I'm gonna say no. I don't th I don't think it, that Batman has a lot of a chance. Do you think that also now that we seem and I'm I'm just saying seem like the concerns over people going back in public, going back in the movie theaters, fears of COVID have seemed to wane, that people that this summer is gonna be the blockbuster summer that we remember summer movies being. Try like that again? <laughs> no, I, I know what you're saying. Like the last two summers, we yeah. haven't really, I mean, COVID has, been, has eclipsed everything yeah, that's come out. Yeah, the last couple, yeah. And it seems like now, People are feeling a lot more confident about going back. Even people who were very concerned feel are feeling a lot more confident about going back and sitting in a theater with a bunch of strangers, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. I feel like this is going to be the first time since 2019 that we've seen an actual summer of blockbusters. Yeah, yeah. it's possible. Now, Variety, of course, we talked about this big thing because a number of months ago, Variety had put out this report of a study done that showed that 50% of at least semi-regular moviegoers pre-pandemic have not started yet coming back to the movies. Wow. Now, that was before Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, Spider-Man No Way Home probably became, for a lot of people, the first movie they went back to. Now, they've updated that, say that has gone down to 25%. So there are still a lot of people who were at least semi-regular moviegoers pre-pandemic who have not yet started going back. But that number is going to start to expand, as we saw with Spider-Man No Way Home. So... Yeah, it may not be back to pre-pandemic levels, but I think you're right. I think this will be the first summer that we feel like this is a legitimate blockbuster season now that we haven't had in a while. And also, when studios hopefully are not releasing movies directly to streaming, but are, I mean, is Warner Brothers going to do the same thing that they did last year? Are they still continuing with that? We're releasing it on HBO Max at the same time as we're no. releasing no, it in theaters? No, they said they're they'll, done with that. They'll never do there that There you again. go. So that's, that's why a, Batman was just in theaters. So. Yeah. yeah, so I think that that's also going to have an effect on it. So let me ask you then. Rob, let me start with you. What do you think is going to be the biggest thing. I mean, obviously, we I, like I just said it's going to be Avatar 2. If the trailer comes out and I don't think it's very impressive, I'm, I'm going to reserve the right to change yeah, my of guess. Course we, but we always where have are you at that. right now? Okay, I your top five, I am with you, but I would make some shifts in your list. All right. I would bring uh, Jurassic Park up to number three in front of Thor Love and Thunder. Okay. So for me, number one, Avatar 2. I completely agree with everything you said. Number two is Doctor Strange. I don't think Doctor Strange is going to do is going to do Spider Man numbers, but I think it's going to come. It's going to be in that realm. Number three is Jurassic World Dominion. Number four, I'm going to put Aquaman in front of Thor: Love and Thunder at number five. Really good. Put you think Aquaman has a better chance of being the biggest film of the year well, over Love, Thor: Love and Thunder? Only because I believe that. Aquaman outgrossed it it really depends those two movies it depends we haven't seen trailers on either one of them so it's hard to say just like we haven't seen Avatar 2 but I would estimate with with what Aquaman did at first if it's great and if it's crazy and fun it could probably make more than what it made first and I think Thor has never I don't know if Rag did Ragnarok make a billion I don't know yeah if it I did. believe it did I'm not sure but I think that it again it depends but I, I would I want to put Aquaman, but the the top five that you said. So um, 
Avatar 2, Doctor Strange, Jurassic World, Aquaman, and Thor Love and Thunder. That would be my choice. Do you have a guess which do you think is going to be the biggest film of the year when it's all said and done right now? I agree with you about Avatar 2, but I am actually going to go one step further than Rob, and I'm going to put Jurassic World Dominion at number two yeah, because I feel like that captures an entire that. audience <laughs> that – Thor and Aquaman does not capture, you know, it's the, it, it's, it's all the parents that want to bring their kids to see, um, to see the, the dinosaurs. It's all the, you know, the people who loved the original, um, Jurassic park and are going to continue seeing it because it was part of that franchise because it's part of that franchise. Um, so I, I, I definitely am putting Jurassic world dominion, Jurassic park world dominion at number two. It's going to be between those two avatar yeah. and Jurassic for me too. Yeah. Really? So you guys think Jurassic? You guys it, think Jurassic is going to outdo Doctor Strange, Thor, Love? But yeah, Thor, I'm okay. I it do. It depends how good Doctor Strange is, though. It's also hard to say because Doctor Strange looks great, but it could be overkill. Yeah, it could be a mess. And, and it also might a be a one-hit wonder. It might. I mean, yeah. one of the reasons why these movies make so much money is not just because of the sheer number of people that are seeing it, but also the people that go, "Oh my God, that was awesome! I want to go see it again yep. because I want to see all the things that I missed." And Doctor Strange might be a really cool movie that people go check done saw it next like jurassic and avatar are spectacles to me that people would go see over and over and who knows where marvel those marvel movies are allowed to play i mean i mean it might not be able to play in china or whatever i mean that's true that, that, I mean, could, so. that could play a part that could play a role that's a really good point anyway guys the question is for you what do you think? I mean, obviously, we need to see how good the movies are. We haven't even seen trailers for some of them, so we're yeah. just blindly guessing and speculating. But if you had to guess right now what you think was going to be the number one film of the year at the box office that we, the moviegoers, make the biggest film of the year, what do you think we're going to make the biggest film of the year? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a minute and thank a sponsor of today's video, Viore. Now, you know, Ann and I like to work out and train several days a week, but the thing is I want to be comfortable and not look like a slob at the same time. And I often have a hard time finding something that does both, but Viore, everything is designed to work out in, but it doesn't look or feel like it's made to be worked out in. It is so comfortable. You will want to wear this stuff all the time. Now you guys know I like some flexibility and versatility in the clothes that I wear, but that's where Viore comes in. See, it can be used for just about any activity like running, training, swimming, yoga, but it's also great just for lounging around or going out on the weekends in. For example, take the men's core shorts. These are the most comfortable and one of the best looking pairs of shorts that you can own and they're versatile. One pair of shorts for just about every sport that you can play. Or take the men's Sunday performance jogger. These pants are perfect for lounging around in or going out for a good run. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our viewers, they are offering 20% off your very first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash campia. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash campia not only will you receive 20 percent off your first purchase but enjoy free shipping on any u.s orders over 75 dollars and free returns go to viore.com slash campia and discover the versatility of viore clothing 